Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do the video on uh, the tankless. Um, I guess the final install of the tankless and go over some things. Uh, so if you watched the previous video, you saw that we had issues. Uh, the thing was leaking from the factory. So <clears throat> told you those screws were missing. I, uh, I got those screws just as promised uh, within uh, two days uh, and they fixed the problem. Uh, putting those screws in, uh, tightened everything up and it held pressure, held water, and so we're up and running. Um, it went pretty textbook, following the instructions. The only issue I had was I got an error code early on, uh, mainly because I forgot to bleed the propane line, so it couldn't ignite. So once I pulled the hose off and did that, uh, reattached it, it was fine. So I guess to start, because uh, I don't know what I've talked about yet, <clears throat> my tankless, it's a Renai. Uh, there it is up there. You saw the video about the venting. Uh, this is a 199,000 BTU uh, tankless. It's basically the biggest home unit you can buy. Um, I can't remember exactly what kind of demand it will actually serve, but pretty much it's like two showers, you know, while washing dishes and you know whatever. So uh, big enough for day-to-day -day use. It will be plenty, and if it isn't, then we cannot shower so much with this big family. I don't know. They can take turns. Because I wasn't about to put in a second tankless. That would have been crazy. So <clears throat> that's what we chose. Uh, heard good things about Renai. So far, I really like it. Uh, and again, uh, shout out to the Renai guy on YouTube for his helpful videos and setting all this up. Uh, so that's another... If that's that's another reason to, to go with Renai by, yourself, is, by itself is... If you get a Renai, you have this wealth of knowledge on how to install it <laughs> on YouTube. So uh, I'll talk a little more about this thing. This, uh, What's cool about this, this is the RUR series, which means it has a built-in recirculation pump uh, for a hot water recirculation loop. This was really critical on a, a list of things that I wanted to do because the design of our house, it's very long. And the, the way the fixtures mapped out was we basically had... All the fixtures on one side of the house, except for the master suite and the master suite on the complete opposite side of the house. So if you recall from the uh, water piping video, we ran three quarter inch kind of trunk lines out to the master to serve all those branches, right? So part of that, if you remember, is the return line there for the hot water recirculation loop. <clears throat> so let me take you through this piping real quick. So there is the input in the tankless. I put a valve there just because. And as we're coming into the tankless, we have a check valve here. And uh, I'll be duplicating some of Renai Guy's content, only ho much more horribly. All right. This is, a, this is a spring load check valve. He says, Do you use spring load check valves? Don't use any other kind. So that's what I did. Spring load check valve coming down here into a T. That T then goes up into the cold water supply of your tankless, right? Uh, I use PEX, but you know, adapt it to your threads and go into the tankless. And then likewise, hot water go out, right? Down into the hot water feed with some really crappy piping, as you can see, and go out. And that serves the rest of the house, right? So for the hot water recirculation loop, it's coming back, right? Coming down, come down here. We've got a bleeder valve to bleed the loop. So I just got the cheapest valve I could get. I could hook a garden hose to so I wouldn't make a mess. So a bleeder valve to bleed the loop. Another check valve, right? This is so, uh, you know, cold water can't go that way, right? And we don't want any hot water to go this way, right? From the hot water coming back from the recirculation loop, we don't want to pollute our cold water supply. And conversely, we don't want any cold water to make its way up into our loop, right? And messing things up, so check valves and then another um, another shutoff valve here to isolate it for bleeding so you can turn this off and then keep the tankless full of water and pressurized while you bleed out the loop for whatever reason right so you you don't have to you want to avoid getting air air in this thing uh, and then that recirculation loop just goes down angled and goes into the other side of that T right and that's what makes the loop so I chose to use color code piping because I liked it. So we got warm water in the loop coming back into the cold supply. I liked that. Uh, 
other piping considerations. We've got the, um, I almost called it a blow-off valve. It's not a blow-off valve, that's cars. Uh, this is a, uh, what, what's it called? Is it called a blow? <laughs> Pressure valve or pop-up, relief valve. That's what it's called, relief valve. You got the relief valve there. Okay, and if you open that up, it'll actually bleed out all of the, uh, like start bleeding out water from the tankless. And so that, and that has to be piped to kind of a condensate drain, but it's own separate pipe, three quarter inch uh, PVC or something similar. So I just piped it down to my floor drain, all right? Likewise, there also is a condensate drain you need. So there's a half inch coming out here. So you need to run a dedicated half inch line for the condensate with a vent, all right? You come down. Now this thing, I can't remember if I've talked about this, but we'll talk about it now, is a condensate neutralizer. So if you notice my three quarter line, right? It just kind of snakes around it and goes right into my drain. The half inch comes down here. We have to, we have an air gap that is required uh, for the condensate drain there. We have to have an air gap there. And then we go into a Y here to prevent overflow from the condensate. So normal path, it goes down and into the condensate filter, but if it ever backs up, then we have this, this uh, we got a Y coming in here that is basically an overflow drain that will come down and go right, you know, drain out again into the, into the drain so you don't have any floods and it doesn't back up into your, uh, your air gap there and, uh, you know, overflow there, right? It all goes down the drain. Now this condensate filter, or condensate neutralizer, I should say. What it does is the, the condensate coming off the tank list is very acidic. And so this uh, neutralizes the pH before it hits either the city sewer or in my case, my septic. Um, you know, uh, high acidic condensate, bad for all the little microbes uh, in the septic that break down on the waste. And so neutralizing it before it hits that is a good idea. And this is relatively cheap, so why not do it now? So I got this and I also got another bag of media just to last me for a while. I think I think those pellets will last a few years and I got extras, so I figure we'd be good for a while. Uh, and then gas supply. I ran, you can see there, just a three quarter inch black pipe with a shutoff valve uh, to here. And then we got a drip leg, right? That That is for um, if there's any sediment or anything like that in the gas supply, when it hits that, it will settle to the bottom and that way that sediment doesn't get into your uh, equipment. Then we transition to a flex line, three quarter inch flex line, and then into the, uh, into the tankless right there. What else? Last thing, we got some control wires here uh, that I ran to this separate controller panel. So this is not required. Uh, but you need this or its Wi-Fi counterpart, if you want to do this all from Wi-Fi, uh, to run the uh, recirculation pump and the timer. So you can set a schedule, and you can see it up here. It's, it's running on a schedule, and it's running now. So you can see what times it's running versus not. You can have two different profiles, and then you can also do all the other functions. So setting the, uh, setting the tankless temperature, you know, it'll tell you, hey, the recirculating pump is running. There's a little fire icon there. You can see if, the, if it's detecting demand and the tankless is actually firing, it'll show you there. So kind of a cool control panel. Um, it also came with a Wi-Fi module where you can do everything uh, you know, from an app or whatever. Um, I figured I just wanted to dedicate a control panel here in the mechanical room. And unfortunately you can't have both. I wish I could have both, but they say you can't. So, uh, Kind of a crappy wiring job on my part, but it is the mechanical room, so I really didn't care too much. Uh, they actually set this up to where you can run this in a, like a low voltage uh, one gang box. So if you want to mount this in a finished area with the wires behind, then you you can do just that, right? You can, you can treat it like lo normal low voltage wiring and uh, run it in a low voltage box and you can make it nice and clean. Uh, they give you these little leads and they give you uh, a connector that goes on the inside here with leads and then you have to supply your own wire. So this was just leftover uh, garage door wiring that I used. Uh, so just some thin like 18 gauge, 16 gauge, um, you know, two strand or, you know, two wire, anything would work. So I think that's all I know about tankless. 
uh, it works well, uh, especially with that recirculating loop running. Uh, it gets hot and it gets hot quick. So that's that's what you want. So um, that's all I got. Appreciate you all watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.